Hey, what's up? How you doing? Welcome to The Horrible Show Redux. Uh, my name is Tanner. Uh, if you're not familiar with The Horrible Show, uh, we talk about movies, we talk about pickups, we talk about dumb stuff, and we also kind of do parodies. Sometimes we cook because YouTube's about narrowing down your type of video um, so it could be a little bit more accessible. So if you do like videos that The Horrible Show puts out, like, subscribe, click that bell for notifications so you can catch up with every video. Uh, how you doing? Before we get into it, how you guys doing? What's going on? What's going on in your life? Anything good? What's outstanding? I really hope your mental health is doing well. Uh, mine's been a little shoddy, um, but I think that's kind of everybody, especially right around this time of year. It's great to see you. I really hope you're doing well. It's a horrible show and yeah, it totally sucks. That took me three years to write. So what you guys been watching, what you guys been listening to? I always like to hear what you guys have been just into creatively. I know this really doesn't make sense, but it's the only way I can explain it. <laughs> I'm not the smartest dude. Um, but yeah, so what's going on with the music? What's going on with the movies? I'd love to hear about it. Um, if you want to put it in the comments below. You think we need another Hellraiser movie? Do you think throughout all the movies, what is it? Uh, so there's... Jesus Christ, there's 12. No, there's 11. And I think this will be the 12th. Do you think we need another one? Do you... I think we definitely do. Um, because there's so much going on with Hellraiser lore. Um, I think really after the third movie, what I'm going to be talking about here are the, the first three Hellraiser movies. And I'm going to try to sell you this Hellraiser box. Um, because the special features on it, just the way that the film looks, special features... Um, this nice little quaint box set. Um, I think it deserves your time. Um, I really think after the third movie, the lore of the Cenobites, it kind of just became generic, kind of weird slasher movies. Inferno? Yeah, I think that one is like a weird... It's almost like Silent Hilly, but not in a great way. I'm a huge fan of Silent Hill. but um, So I really think... I think uh, a reboot... Um, some really good minds can make a great horror movie. And I can't wait. So today is the 4th and Hellraiser comes out on the 7th on Friday. So I'm a little bit, a mm, little bit, a uh, little bit slow with this video. I should have came out a little while ago. Not a sponsor, Bubbly. It's amazing. It keeps me fueled, keeps me refreshed. Yeah, so let's talk about this Arrow. Hellraiser box set because I think it really 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 deserves your time um, I'm gonna try not to get too spoilery spoilery um, Just in case I think people might be cramming in the first couple movies I really think you can skip most of them except for the first three um, That's my stance on it um, That's what I'm doing before the new one uh, So Clyde Barker's Hellraiser This is a English production through and through based on the Hellbound Heart by Clyde Barker the story which um, I have not read, sadly, but I do have it. I just got it from Audible, and I'm going to try to cram it in. I'm try to cram it in, uh, hopefully before Friday, um, just to see if there's anything, if there's any difference between the first movie and the, uh, the reboot, just to see if there's anything that they picked from the Hellbound Heart. Um, so this one has so many special features on it. Um, it has the Leviathan documentary on it, but... The biggest critique to that documentary is that it's like eight hours long, literally. So what this box set does, it kind of breaks them up per movie and then condenses it. So if you go on like IMDb or anything like that and read the reviews for Leviathan, they'll be like, man, it's good, but it's just way too damn long. Um, so the first part of Leviathan on the first Blu-ray is about an hour and a half. And then the second part is about two hours. So three hours and a half compared to eight hours they say it's like the perfect runtime and what else like when it gets to a certain point you don't want to really know anymore <laughs> you know what i'm saying so yeah so frank cotton is a man with uh, outrageous tastes sensually of this world and uh he discovers the puzzle box and then uh, some crazy stuff happens too. I'm really not trying to spoil anything. Um, and then it turns out his extended family, his brother Larry and his wife uh, and his daughter move into this house. 
Um, and there's something lurking in the attic, which they are not sure of and definitely don't know until it's maybe too late. As the whole story unravels, you're introduced to these things called the Cenobites, which are like um, extrasensory demons that rule this dimension of pleasure and pain. Pretty intense shit. So I generally was not the biggest fan of this movie when I was a kid. So like, I remember growing up, it was like, uh, oh, you gotta watch Nightmare on Elm Street. You get the big ones out the way. You have Friday the 13th, Halloween. They're like, yo, watch uh, the Hellraiser series. And I think, I don't know why, maybe because it's a little bit slower paced in the beginning. The first act's a little slow. But um, I want to say that this is one of the times that it really, like uh, the past couple years. So I rewatched Hellraiser probably about a year ago. And then I rewatched the first one. And man, that's just a such, it's such a good movie. It's so creepy. The effects. Um, are so so good uh, 1987 so it was like um, right at the cream of the crop of the, the practical effects I think there's some great performances uh, there's Andrew Robinson that plays Larry that everybody kind of hates because he was the Scorpio killer in I believe it was the first Dirty Harry movie and then Ashley Lawrence just knocks it out of the park uh, she is kind of the the scream queen heroine of the pretty much the whole series um, yeah, give or take a couple movies. And I wish, man, I wish she could make an appearance in the new uh, the new Hulu movie. But, you know, wish all day. All right. So let's talk about Hellbound. Hellbound, Hellraiser 2 is a direct continuation of uh, the first Hellraiser, which is pretty awesome. Kind of love when movies do that. The original Halloween and Halloween 2, it's almost, you could just watch them back to back. It's like one big long movie. So the ideas in Hellraiser 2 Hellbound are really innovative mysterious really really cool i would have loved to see the series go in the way that hellbound uh portrayed the cenobites and the laminate configuration and so what hellbound hellraiser 2 does um it kind of brings a backstory to what the cenobites are um and it's real to me it's really interesting because in the first movie you get to see them and they're so intense and your mind just kind of creates any kind of backstory for them. Like, what else could be a part of this? Like, what kind of other abstract Lovecraftian things can they add to this storyline? Because it seemed like the the ideas were limitless, really. Sadly, Hellraiser 3. So that's kind of a continuation of the second one as well. But really think they just made it very generic monster movie, Do you, this is a, if that makes sense. I do believe some people have a bit of nostalgia for Hellraiser 3, kind of nostalgia to the, how the Cenobites looked, because there's still some pretty good, good gore effects. Um, the 90s, I feel like late 80s, early 90s, I still feel like they were pretty tame um, when it comes to gore and effects like that, at least with these big studio movies of course there are things like dead alive that you know released indie and they were just like the most gory thing ever um, this kind of takes a turn from the christy cotton story kind of left with the story between joey which is the, the the lead actress and then elliot spencer which is pinhead and then pinhead so you're kind of left with this kind of like tripod of uh important main characters out of a lot of these films, I think Pinhead is one of the most vicious in this film. If you really want to get your Pinhead on, Hellraiser 3, I think, is going to be for you. You can sit back. It's not as abstract as Hellbound or even the original. So it's a little bit easier to follow, uh, whether that's a good thing or that's a bad thing. Um, but I still believe you should watch the 3. And I'm going to go over some of these special features, too. Uh, brand new 2K restoration on uh, Hellraiser, Hellbound, and uh, Hellraiser 3. Um, these also have vintage featurettes, like like what would be after the movie on the VHS, like a 15-minute like behind-the-scenes making of. And that's along with the Leviathan uh, documentaries on these. Um, I know the Hellraiser 3 had its own. Uh, it's got an uncut version of, used from different source materials. I think they used it from a... Um, a pan and scan laser, laser disc but I did watch it and it didn't feel as uh, out of place um, 
Yeah, it was very watchable because that's a, it's about four minutes longer with a, maybe a little extra gore, you know, maybe a little extra dialogue and nudity as well. So if that's your thing. Uh, and they also have separate interviews with Doug Bradley, the guy that plays Pinhead on all three of these movies. He kind of just sat down and told how easy some of the films were, how tough the other ones were. And let's talk about Doug Bradley being a freaking champion. He is the the champion of this film series. Um, he just seems like the nicest dude. That's one thing that I really got from him. I'd love to meet him in person one day. And also there was a funny story on Hellraiser 3. So the uh, producers, I believe Hellraiser 3 went to Miramax. Uh, I believe it was the Dimension uh, Films release. And at first they paid Clyde Barker. They're like, listen, we don't want your name on it. We don't want you involved. Don't do any of the promotions. We want this to be an o our own movie. Um, and he was like, yeah, man, you know, he's always chilling, smoking a cigar. And, uh, and then later they paid him again to put his name back on it. <laughs> so he got paid twice as like a producer. One for just like, Hey, stay the hell out of this. And then two, we need you, bro. Uh, because at the same time, 1992, I believe that, uh, candy band was about to come out and it was getting a lot of buzz. So they're like, dude. We need you again. So he got paid twice. So that's pretty cool. So hopefully one day, if you're making something creative, if they don't want you to be involved, they'll pay you. And then they want you to be involved. And then they'll pay you again. I wish that to my dearest friends. So that's what I got for Hellraiser. Hellraiser, the original, I think I'm going to have to give either a 7 or 8 out of 10. Uh, Hellbound, Hellraiser 2. I love the abstract Lovecraftian ideas. I really do. Um... I think I think you should watch them back to back. That one's still that one's about a seven for me, but if they would have continued the uh the mythos of that, then I would have uh I would have greatly this could have been one of my favorite series of all time. Um and Hellraiser three, Hell on Earth, I think I gave it about a five, but it's okay. Um so what do you think? Do you think that we need a Hellraiser remake, reboot? Um, do you think it's going to be any good? Do you think it's going to be interesting? Are you worried about David S. Goyer? Because he kind of burned us in the past. Sometimes I'm worried about him, but, you know, I'm trying not to be a dick. Sometimes I can be. But, um, yeah, for the, un the Unborn, bro. Unborn got me back in the day. Damn. But I'm really excited to see it. I definitely think we need uh, an expansion on the... Uh, on the Hellraiser idea and see what we can do with the series. So I'm really excited about it. Um, I hate that it's on Hulu, but just because I don't have it, because I'm cheap and I buy movies, which is, I should just get Hulu. That's a me, that's a personal problem. Tell people to love them, give people hugs. Don't be horrible like us. Have a good day. Let's go.